Welcome to the fourth episode in the Coppers and Brass series on Irish traditional music. I'm delighted to have Leo Rickard with us today to talk about the impact of travellers and travellers ill and piping in particular. And we're going to be coming back to you shortly, Leo. Right, Tommy, thank you. We're also going to be going down to the Cobblestones later on to have a look at some of the musicians who gathered there to help us celebrate this series. But in the meantime, we're going to have a short overview of pipers and Irish traditional music. The conditions under which Irish traveller Ellen Piper's played live music has shaped a definitive traveller style which can be traced back to John Cash, travelling piper from Wexford. Cash travelled extensively around Ireland, playing music at open air events in the mid 19th century. The music had to compete with the noise, distractions, and constant movement of people at football matches and horse fairs. If they were to succeed in attracting the attention of passers by, long enough to elicit a financial contribution. The music had to be loud, exciting and performed with virtuosity. The Doran brothers, Johnny and Felix, certainly mastered this craft. Johnny Doran's musical legacy is far-reaching. My image is of Johnny playing the, the same bunch of tunes, however, whatever they were, whether it was 20 or 200, kind of doesn't matter. But he's playing these over and over and over since he was a kid. And I just feel that, okay, he was in the same thing here. How can I change this to make it a bit more interesting for myself? And I think that's where the travelling style came. Well, certainly Johnny's travelling style, I feel, came from just always trying to push the boundaries on any particular tune. And at the same time, it's very definitely that tune. It's not jazz. He's not gone off improvising over a chord structure. He's got a very strong melodic structure that he's sticking really closely to. But he's making the best he can of it. Johnny would have played that. Second, and it's not just that I played it a bit faster, but there's the same, play the same tune for the same length of time and put in far more variations each time around. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what happened with Johnny. He's like, okay, I, I just can't keep doing this for the rest of my life. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's um, boring after all. Yeah. It is, no, no, no harm to the music around, but it's a, very, it's a simple music, it's simple structure, and these guys just want to make fun with it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, his regulator playing, and I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be a patch on Johnny for regulator playing, it's the same kind of thing. It's the some of the syncopated offbeat stuff and if you hear some of the 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 the, the settled players the But you hear them, cha da da He's tricking around with stuff, you know, and uh, single finger playing, sticking the tom or whatever on, 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 the, on the single C key on the bass, that kind of stuff. I'm not saying that that, that settled pipers don't do that, but it's the creativeness yeah. of doing something like that. His unique style is fully appreciated by those who recognised his genius. Musicians like Finbar Fury and Paddy Keenan looked to Johnny Doran for their inspiration and they in turn became role models for aspiring young pipers since the early 1960s. Their music, by their own admission, is shaped and styled on Doran's techniques. I remember going out to, the, to Johnny Doran's grave in Wicklow Town and Felix Doran and I remember Paddy Keenan playing out there at the grave and there was something, there was a kind of a serenity and a kind of a huge respectfulness that kind of that I hadn't seen before I hadn't seen it even with settled people who play Irish music I hadn't seen this you know? Johnny Keenan's funeral mass on Wednesday the 29th of March 2000 in Longford was a setting for a musical tribute to Keenan by Ireland's leading musicians but it was the music of Johnny's brothers Paddy and Thomas that made a lasting impression on everybody present including Martin Nolan The boys started playing 
from my head, I'm sad. But you could hear a place. It was a slow air on the pipes, and Paddy would like him standing beside me, and he said, Why did you? Just whatever it, did, it wasn't like and if anybody else would have played. The boys went. And you could just hear the screaming. Yes, oh, and it was it's like well it was just coming from up in the balcony behind you. And it was unreal. Unreal. And it's it, it, you even a recorder, you'd have to, you know, you'd have to catch it that way. And even then, listening back to it, you, you just had to be in the room, so to speak, for, for what that did to you. That moment. That moment. Yeah, it, was, it was amazing. Keenan strikes up like, you know, I mean, he just literally has to plan the drones and the heads will turn. I saw that in 1974. I, he used to stay with me in Liston Varna and uh, I remember in the pub one night, the place was packed to the door, packed to the rafters. The Bati band were in full flight and Keenan called and he came into the bar and he just started up the drones at the back of the bar and everybody stopped. The Fury Brothers and Davy Arthur, as well as the Bati band, used the door and sound to build a fresh, driving, attacking effect that would excite young followers across the world. When he was on tour with the Bati band, like he'd, he'd, he'd call to me and Mr. Man, he'd stay with me, you know. And my wife, Dr. Messer, was very good to him, we used to keep him and look after him, you know. Mm. But he was, he, was, he was tremendous. But I always felt that they had something, they had something that the other musician didn't have. So they had to put your finger on it. I, I don't understand what it is. I heard Leo there talking about maybe it's the, the extra bit of speed that they have in the music, particularly the reels or whatever. I think it's more than that. I think it's more than that. I think it's something that's there from generations back that distinguished them from everybody else. And that's why people stopped up in the street because there's some incredible pipers at the moment, like absolutely incredible pipers. But there's very few of them can actually do what Fury does now in the pipes, for example. Doran's playing inspired a young Willie Clancy from Milltown Malby to take up the pipes and Doran's influence can be clearly heard in Clancy's piping. The Willie Clancy Summer School has been attracting thousands of pipers and other musicians to West Clare for over 40 years. Harry Hughes has been organising the summer school with the late Mauricio Ruckheim for most of those years. I learned from Paddy's father, so I got my music from the same source that he got it from. Mm -hmm. We're in different worlds, me and Paddy. And that's nothing to do. Well, you see, this is the thing. I, I, I don't, I, I would say, and yeah. honestly, I'm not as good a piper, and technically not as good a piper, yeah. but I was trying to imitate Paddy as well, mm. because he was the, he was the living. Link. Yeah. Link, yeah. because Johnny Dorden was dead by the time I mm. even started playing pipes. Mm. So here was a man who could play very like Johnny Dorden, mm. and he's sitting beside me having a pint in the pub, and he's playing tunes. So you have to, you're trying to get, get somewhere that's into true. that. Yeah. But the penny dropped on me fairly quick that you'll never think like him. Mm. And if you can't think like him, you'll never play like him. You'll imitate him, but you'll never put the nya into a particular note that he put into it. So you kind of have to say, well, this is who I am. What do I want to put into it? Yeah. And you're putting into it what they gave you, but you're putting your, your, your way of thinking into it. And if you listen to Johnny as well, he has a repertoire, and Paddy would be the same, they have a repertoire of techniques. Hmm. It's not endless. And I, and I would use this when I'm teaching students. I said, here's this, and here's this. Now, what we're going to do, the first time around, we're going to put this one in here, and we're going to put this one in here, and the second time around, we're going to switch them techniques around. Hmm. So, to use modern terminology now, that came in with computers, cut and paste. And if you go back and listen to the lads, they're cutting and pasting. First bar he did an A roll. Second bar he did three A taps. Second time round the tune he did the three A taps in the first bar and in the second mm. bar he did the A roll. Simple stuff and you don't know where he's going next. Yeah. And I sometimes think, I don't know, because again we're back to this thing, I'm not inside their brains, but I actually don't know if they know what's coming next. The traveller's style of piping is alive and well. Some interesting views on travellers, ill and pipe playing and Irish traditional music in general there. Leo, 
You're very welcome, as I said earlier. I was delighted to have you. I've long admired your piping, and I know that you have a huge interest in travellers and travellers' piping. Before we get into that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in Irish traditional music? Yeah. Uh, I came into the Inland Pipes in a roundabout sort of a way. I had an uncle that played them. He played in the Rousham Quartet in the 1930s here mm -hmm. in Dublin. He brought Caster with, uh, with Leo Rousham. Mm -hmm. uh, he emigrated to England uh, and he kept up his piping in England, but uh, he kind of fell out with it after a while. He lived in a flat and he couldn't play. So anyway, when he died in 1975, a practice set was sent back to my elder brother, Dave, who played the bagpipes. Mm -hmm. I wasn't interested in music. This was 1976. So uh, I took a shine to this instrument. I hadn't really seen it before. <laughs> so my brother didn't want to give it to me. So he got me a practice set. Mm -hmm. uh, he got it made by Matt Kiernan in Cabra. Oh, Matt, yeah. Uh, Good so pipemaker. It was great, mm -hmm. yeah. So I was dispatched off to number 14, Thomas Street, to learn... The Piper's right. Club. The Piper's Club. Oh, the old yeah. Piper's Club mm -hmm. in Thomas Street mm -hmm. was still just about running. Mm -hmm. uh, the McKenna brothers, Peter and Kevin, mm -hmm. uh, were teaching there. Yeah. And Mick Toohey as well. So I... And you haven't looked back since. I know. It took yeah, face the water. It, it took. Um, you, you, you've been a, a long time um, fan of travelling pipe. And how did you get interested in, in travellers and travelling piping? And where did that music come from? Yes, well, I, very early in my piping career, in around probably 1978, I was lucky enough to be given a, a bootleg recording of Johnny Doran. Oh, right. uh, this, these recordings, Johnny's recordings were not available commercially. This is before the commercial. This is before the, even the cassette yes. version mm -hmm. came out by the Irish Folklore, Folklore Commission. Uh, I got a, a copy of Johnny's recordings, lucky. and I was lucky, mm -hmm. and I was blown absolutely away, because uh, I'd been learning the pipes and doing quite well, but I... This opened up a whole different uh, mm. world. Mm. Uh, around the same time, I also, uh, Paddy Keenan would have brought out his first solo. Uh, 75, I think it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, would, it would have been after that. When I, when I, again, I heard it, but, uh, so, but uh, so Paddy uh, was very much mm. in the mm -hmm. loop mm -hmm. at, at that time as well. But so that's really what, what drew me in. Johnny Doran first, and then yeah. I, uh, having, I got to know Paddy, and then it was great to have access to him. And, I, I and that's a great uh, legacy that goes r right mm. back to John Cash. Yeah. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Well, I mean, Cash the Piper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the, the, it goes back to the Doran family, like the Dorans and the Cashes mm -hmm. are obviously are related. Uh, like Johnny's great uncle would have been James Cash. Correct. Uh, James Cash was a very famous and successful, commercially successful music hall piper at the turn of the last century. Uh -huh. uh, unfortunately, he was never recorded, but he was, he was highly regarded. He was uh, by, very much by Willie Rousam, Leo's mm -hmm. father. And Captain Francis O'Neill came over from Chicago at the turn mm -hmm. of the century at the same mm -hmm. time to do uh, a big research on Irish mu music in Dublin and in Ireland. And he was absolutely enthralled with James Cash. Uh, he, Cash was a, a constant performer in London and in Dublin in Are there, uh, any, music halls. Uh, any particular tunes associated with he, him? He was a composer. He wrote, a, he wrote a good few tunes, but there's one which is very kind of fam famous now, uh, and it's, it, not a lot of people know that it, James Cash wrote it. There's a song, a music hall song called Sweet Marie, uh -huh. and everyone thinks the tune is called Sweet Marie, but it's, a, it's actually a, a long dance or a set dance that James Cash wrote called Parnell's March. Would you give us a wee twinkle on it? Okay. Good yeah. man. Leo, that was fantastic, and I didn't realise that that tune had been written by Cash, Cash the Younger, and of course very well played by yourself, as always. Thank you. We're going to take a wee break now, we're going to skip across the Liffey to the Cobblestones, and this week we're going to have a performance by Gay McKeown playing a tune very closely associated with Irish Travellers, and with Johnny Dorn in particular, Sleeve them on. My name is uh, Gay McKeown, um, I was born in Dublin, I've been playing the pipes here, and I was lucky to uh, learn with Leo Rosam. There's a 
big connection between the Cassius, the Rosens and the Dorans. And um, so I'm just delighted to be here tonight. So I was just thinking of a few tunes that might be associated with uh, the Dorans. And um, uh, Schlieb Naman came to mind. I learned it with Leo Rosen when I was a kid. And uh, I play a tune that Finbar Fury, when I was young, I heard Finbar Fury playing it and I fell in love with it. And uh, Dee Paddy Keenan plays it a lot too. And that's the Ace of Ace and juice of pipe and set down, so I'll give those uh, a go.
and that was a great performance by Gay McKeown on the Ellen Pipes. Leo, you're involved in, I know that you're, you're a big fan of, of Irish traveller style, but you're also involved in trying to, to, to keep that alive and for future generations. Tell us a wee bit about the, the work you do in teaching Pipes to young people. Yeah, well, I, I get lots of requests from my pupils uh, about Johnny Dorn and Felix and, in, in, you know, Paddy Kane and Finbar Fury, Fury. So I'm, as you know, part of the Dorn Chanel Committee that, right. that we run the Chanel in County Clare every year to promote mm -hmm. the travelling style of playing mm -hmm. the pipes. So I try to do it as much as I can. Joe Dial, myself, mm -hmm. Martin Nolan, uh, we all try, we try to nurture what's left yeah. of it is nearly a, a lost tradition you know mm -hmm. it, it's very much in the minority now at the moment mm -hmm. the, the way of life for travelers has changed dramatically mm -hmm. over the last 50 60 years mm -hmm. and so the the reliance on making a living playing music has diminished for them so the the style of playing has come down mm -hmm. to a narrow kind of yeah. a point now and will will that survive the you know the changes in society that music was born out of the necessity well, when they played on the road and no, travellers are no yeah. longer you know living that same sort of lifestyle will the music survive i i believe it will it just it will change as martin referred earlier the the, mm -hmm. the style of playing is handed down so somebody like me will will never play it the same way as Johnny Dorden mm -hmm. or as Paddy Keane and because uh, we're not travellers and so it, we haven't had it handed down to us but the, 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 the great opportunity we have is that there's so much media now that we can record all this music mm -hmm. and say save it you know and that, that's the difference where year, years ago there was no recordings mm -hmm. there are now so it, it's it's been preserved now in from acetate to Mm -hmm. tape to CD to MP3 files and all that. So and technology is helping. Technology it. is yeah. definitely yeah. a great help here. Yeah. And, and are, you, are you optimistic about the future of piping? Yes, very much so. Sure, the PBL are doing fantastic yeah. work. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are. It, it, there's more pipe pipers in the world now than there ever was. Uh, and the demand for pipes, I mean, you know, with the program they're running mm -hmm. to, to make pipes. In fantastic. And it's, you know, I mean, yeah. it's, it, they're doing fantastic work. So between everybody, we're all, I mean, piping is in a much better position now I think than it ever was. I think it is too yeah. and, and it is and you're right in the people you have a large yeah. part of playing that yeah. but individuals like yourself and Joe yeah. and Blackie mm. people not from the traveller community mm. I think mm. we're indebted to you for, yeah. for the, the care and attention that you've given to that legacy and I want to thank you for coming up, up to date of the studio to talk and help us understand it a, a bit more. Really appreciate it. Thank you Tommy. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank, thank you. you. No, that was a very informative chat with Leo on uh, Irish travellers and the impact that their music is having on people like him and, uh, and others. That brings us to the end of this programme. Next week, <clears throat> very logically now, we're going to go to the Peabreal and we're going to uh, examine the role that that organisation has, has been making for many years on the development of ill and pipe playing, uh, not just for people in Ireland but worldwide. We'll be joined by Gay McKeown, the Chief Executive of the Peabreal, and we'll also be going across to the Cobblestones again for a tune. And I think our guest performance next week will be Vinton Valley from Armagh. So an awful lot of really good stuff coming up next week. So looking forward to seeing you. Take care and God bless. Bye.